Hi guys, it's Tara and welcome back to Crafting with Curly Cues. Today I am doing a project for Gerda Steiner Designs and I am using this super fun squirrel and he was just so much fun to color and I just had to bust out my Prismacolors to give him some fun little fur texture when I colored him. So to start, I am going to take this really cute die set from My Favorite Things. This is called Trees in the Forest and it cuts out all these really cute little stitched trees um, that are kind of graphic in design and I am just going to cut these out of some regular Nina 110 pound solar white cardstock. So I'm actually going to cut this out a whole bunch of times because I'm going to create six of these cards. Um, I'm only going to do one in the video for you here but I do it like off camera make six of these so that's why I'm cutting so many. So I'm just going to run that through my die cut machine over and over. I left my dies um, all hooked together because I need every single piece so I figured why cut them apart. That was just easier. So you can see my giant pile of trees. I have to look at a whole forest there. So that's awesome. So here is my card base. Um, this is from some Nina 110 pound solar white also. And I am just going to use that. It's a top folding A2 size card here. Um, that's my brand new Teflon bone folder. I'm trying that out. I finally caved. I've wanted one forever and I kind of held out because they're a little on the spendy side. But um, I finally treated myself and got one of those, so I'll let you guys know what I think. I've only used it, like, this one time, so not quite enough to form an opinion yet. So far, it's great, but, you know, just the one time have I used it. So what I'm doing here is I am just going to create a really subtle white background with these trees. So I am just taking each of these trees, and I am gluing them on the front of this card base in just kind of a random pattern. I'm just kind of wanting the space to look filled. I'm not trying to put them in perfectly straight rows and I'm not like, I'm, I'm honestly just kind of putting them where I think that they're gonna fill the space. I cut two sets of these trees for each card that I'm creating. So I kind of have that boundary that I'm working with that I know about how many trees I can use for each card before I have to do more die cutting. So that's kind of what I'm going with in my head, but there really is no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just using my Zig Glue pen to put these on here. You could use whatever adhesive is your preference, um, probably something liquid because they're super tiny, so I don't think a tape runner would run would work very well on these, but um, any liquid adhesive that floats your boat would be great. I like the glue pen just because it's nice and easy and it doesn't make a huge mess all over the place, which is a huge advantage when you're working with a liquid adhesive because sometimes they can just go bonkers. So I will create more projects in the future with these trees where I like color them and such, but I just wanted to create, I've seen a lot of other crafters do where they use die cuts that are the same color as their card base just to create like some texture on the background. And I just thought it was really fun. And I thought that this would be a really great surrounding for the super cute squirrel that I'm going to use later. So I made sure on purpose that some of those kind of hung off the edge of the card because I wanted this to look like organic. So then I'm just going to take my scissors and trim up um, all of the excess that's hanging off the sides so that when you look at the front, it's just a nice clean pattern, but some of the trees go off the side so that it looks like it's continuing out there beyond where the card is. So I did leave some kind of white space down there in that bottom right corner. And that is because I am going to take a stitched circle die here. So this is from Simon Says Stamp and it has the stitching lines on both the inside and the outside of the circle. So that's specifically why I'm using it. I wanted the stitch lines on the outside so that you could see them on the front of the card base. And I'm just gonna position that down in that corner there and I'm actually going to cut away a piece of the front of my card base here. So I use a little post-it tape to hold that in place while I run that through my Big Shot. And then when I pop that out of there, you can see that it leaves behind those super cute stitch lines and it creates a window opening in the front of my card. So you can see right through onto the inside of the card. So at this point, you could do something a little different with your design and put some like maybe colored card stuck on the inside if you wanted to or something like that. I like it when you can see the inside of the card from the outside. So I do that quite a bit. So this is the Happy Fall set from Gerda Center Designs. I am kind of obsessed with these little squirrels. They are so so cute and I wanted to show you too how you could take this set that's kind of designed for fall time and use it on an anytime card so you don't have to use your stamp sets for necessarily when they're designed for so that's always a good way to stretch your stamps like if you have like maybe a Christmas set that you can pull an element out and use it all year round that's always awesome just to make your supplies go that much further. So I did notice that my card base was kind of folded a little goofy so I trimmed off some of the excess so that everything looked nice there. 
and I am going to stamp that little squirrel right in that window. So basically he's going to be stamped on the inside of the card, but you're going to be able to see him when the card is closed to kind of com complete the front of the card design. So I do this a lot. For some reason, this is just something that I like doing. I like that it finishes off the inside and the outside all at once and makes my life that much easier, which is awesome. <laughs> so, um, anywho, like I said, you could put something else there and not necessarily make it go all the way through, but totally up to you. So I am using this sweet little high. This is also from my favorite things. It's from the hello there, um, die set and it's just nice and simple. I thought that it would go really cute. That little squirrel, the sentiment, one of the sentiments that comes in the stamp set says, oops. So it's almost like he's like stolen your acorn and had a bite and he's like, oops, you caught me. So he's got this really sweet little expression on his face. And I don't know. I just thought like hi was perfect. Like he's hiding in that little woods there and then you see him and he just kind of turns and he's like, hi. So anyway, that's what I was thinking. So now the card is pretty much done and all I have to do is color this adorable little squirrel. So I am using my Prismacolors here and um, this takes quite a while. Like if I was using Copics, this probably would have taken about half the time that it does to, to color it with my Prismacolors. And the main reason for that is because Prismacolors work so amazing if you work in layers. So you can see that I'm putting down a base layer here of kind of a light brown color and I am like barely applying any pressure. So the key in my opinion to getting um, great shadowing and texture and coloring with your colored pencils, your Prismacolors, is to build the color up on top of itself as opposed to pushing really hard to make that color build on there. Especially with Prismacolors because they're really waxy, they're wax based colored pencils and so if you push too hard that wax just like coats your whole surface and then you can't get any more color to stick on top of the wax that you've laid down. So by going really really light you're able to layer that color up on top of itself like over and over and over until you get the the shading that you're after. So I just put down a base of a nice light color over the entire squirrel and you can see that I'm working with super sharp pencils like that's another thing that I think is really advantageous when working with colored pencils is just to make sure that they're really really sharp. It helps you just get in all the small spaces. It helps it helps me personally push not as hard because if I have like this dull little point it's like I'm wanting to get in the spaces and I get all aggressive about it which is not okay so sharpen those pencils um I did link over at my blog to a the Prismacolor pencil sharpener that I use um it's also linked down below in the description box here if you want to check that out and I have found that it works really well the Prismacolors have really soft lead so I was using a really cheap like not awesome pencil sharpener for a while and it kept breaking all of my pencils and I mean these pencils are not they don't cost nothing so it was kind of bumming me out that every time I went to sharpen them they would break and so I finally just spent a little bit of money on the nicer pencil sharpener and I haven't really had any problems since I bought that Prismacolor pencil sharpener and so that's worked really well for me. So now the only reason I have little short pencils is because I use them too much which is awesome because they are like my favorite. So I considered before I started coloring um, doing the old Prismacolors with Gamsol technique. So I'm sure you guys have heard of that. It's a really great technique to use with your Prismacolors um, if you get some Gamsol. I think some people use baby oil maybe. I could completely be talking out of turn there. I've never used that but I've always used the Gamsol product. Um, you can use that Gamsol and it will blend your Prismacolor pencils beautifully like it always to me anytime you use Gamsol with Prismacolors it looks like an illustration in a children's book is completely the the way that it looks to me and that was my original plan here was go, I was going to use the Gamsol which is why I used VersaFine ink which is waterproof ink um, and then I just I don't know I got to coloring and I just was kind of liking the texture of having the pencil lines a little bit and it's just like it's fur so I thought that looked pretty cute and to be honest, I couldn't find my little cup that I usually put my Gamsol in. And so that was <laughs> affecting my decision because I didn't want to get out of my chair and find a new cup. But I ended up really liking the way that it looks just with the Prismacolors, like just the pencils in and of themselves. Um, the Gamsol technique is great, but I would have lost all of that great texture that I have there because it does blend things out super smoothly, like almost Copic level blend when you're using that Gamsol. And so, I don't know. 
I just ended up liking this a little bit better. And it's just another way because a lot of people like kind of only use their Prismacolors with Gamsol. But I just wanted to show that you don't have to do that. And this is on a smooth paper also. This is on that Nina card base. Um, I also like to use my Prismacolors on like watercolor cardstock because it's got a little bit more grit and it can like grab the pigment really well. But you don't have to do that. You can use it on the smooth cardstock also. So you can see I've just been layering up and up and up. And I had that super dark brown that I'm putting right in the, the spots where I want the deepest shadows. And you can see how he's really coming to life now. Like he's really becoming more three dimensional and those layers are really darkening up the color. So this is kind of my final layer. It's the base color that I used at the beginning and I'm kind of going over everything and blending it all kind of out and together and all that good stuff. So now I want his little cheeks to be kind of pink. So I'm just going to come in with a pink and I do push pretty hard with that because I'm only going to do just the one layer and went over it with the brown a little bit to make it a little bit more subtle. And now what I'm going to do in lieu of like Gamsol is I'm coming in with a blender pencil. So I think this is an invaluable tool to have if you have Prismacolors because while yes, I can get a really good blend with just my pencils, um, I just feel like sometimes I just want that blend to be just a little bit smoother. So this is essentially just a colorless Prismacolor. And so what you do is just come in over the top of your colors, or this is what I do. I mean, there's probably other things you can use this for, but I am not like a super fancy schmancy artist, but... Um, what I use it for is that then when I'm all done coloring, I just go over the top and I color in with this co this colorless pencil and it just kind of takes the edge off of that blending and just kind of makes everything look nice and smooth without losing the texture. So like I said, it's a val it's like an invaluable tool. It doesn't come in the sets of Prismacolors. You do have to buy them separately. I think there's two in a pack, but I have used it like almost every time that I use my Prismacolors, I use that blender pencil. So I think that it's a really great thing to have to go with your Prismacolors. And then you'll see later when I do the shadowing for this little guy, I'm actually going to use that like I would like a Copic colorless blender just to blend it out into nothing. So that's also where this blender pencil comes in really handy. So I colored the little acorn and put some shadows on and then I came back in again with that um, colorless blending pencil and just kind of smooth that out just a little bit. I hope you could see the difference from before I used the pencil to after and maybe it's not as <laughs> dramatic as I feel like it is, but... I feel like it's totally awesome. <laughs> so now I just have a light gray color and I'm just going to put a little bit of shadowing. I do not want this to be dark at all. Um, with that blender pencil, I did scribble it off on some scrap paper because it had some brown on the tip from going over the squirrel and the acorn. And I didn't want that brown to get on the ground. So I just colored on another space until that was all gone. So all I did was add some black glaze pen to his nose and eyes and put some white dots on his cheeks. And that card is finished. So you can see the really fun, subtle background you get by putting those white die cuts on top of the white um, card base there. I was trying to adjust my light so you guys could see that a little bit better. <laughs> so I really love that subtle background. I love the squirrel in the forest. I think that's super cute. And then I love the texture for coloring that you get when you use those Prisma colors to color him. So this is how you can see that he's on the inside of the card as well as the outside of the card. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching today. All the supplies that I used are listed below as well as over at curlycues.blogspot.com. If you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe and leave a comment. Um, don't forget to check out the description box below to visit Gerda Steiner Designs and to join me on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. Thanks guys. Bye.